Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be discussing whether or not reishi mushroom causes liver toxicity or liver damage. Okay, so quick disclaimer before we dive into this video, if you already watched last week's FAQ and heard me talk about the subject, then you likely heard just about everything that I'm going to say here in this video. However, I have decided to make this subject into its own standalone video due to the fact that many people, more than one, have asked this question. And I actually see this question or concern come up a lot on the internet in general. So for anybody that's finding our YouTube channel on YouTube in the search bar, or maybe you searched this particular topic yourself, this video is more or less for you. Also, not everybody watches the entire FAQ. Sometimes people skim over certain topics only watching the stuff that pertains to them or that interests them. So either way, this video should be helpful for just about anybody. I think the information in it is worth understanding and knowing because you can apply it to more than just reishi alone. You can apply this to a lot of other herbs and mushrooms. So the premise of this video is the concern that reishi mushroom causes liver toxicity. And from what I've seen on the internet and what I've received from emails, the basic concern about reishi causing liver toxicity comes back to this single study here. And obviously anybody that were to see the title of this study would first and foremost think that reishi mushroom causes liver toxicity, therefore I probably shouldn't take it. So if we take a look or a quick glance at this study, it basically reads that patients who supplemented with the traditionally boiled lingzi mushroom or reishi mushroom experienced zero negative side effects. However, once patients started taking a reishi powder, within one to two months, they developed liver toxic episodes. So from first glance, it's totally reasonable and understandable why somebody would be concerned about reishi powder causing liver toxicity. However, any skilled Chinese medicine practitioner or Chinese herbalist or any herbalist for that matter, upon reading the study would see what's actually going on here. If we take a closer look at the study, there's one key discernment that needs to be made, which is the difference between a traditionally boiled reishi mushroom supplement and a reishi powder supplement. So first and foremost, the study points out that a traditionally boiled reishi or a hot water decoction results in no toxic side effects whatsoever. And this is important to understand. However, just taking a reishi powder will induce liver toxic effects. Why is this? Well, ultimately, there's two major things that any herbalist will learn. First and foremost, what mushrooms, herbs, and other tonics are beneficial for what in the human body? Secondly, how do you prepare that particular substance to make it non-toxic, bioavailable, and medicinal? You see, every mushroom contains an indigestible protein known as chitin which is a non-biocompatible match for the human body, meaning that the human digestive tract can't break down this protein, which results in gut inflammation, and that can cause liver toxic episodes. So any raw mushroom, especially polyporous mushrooms, which are very dense and very tough and indigestible, are incredibly difficult to break down. If you were to just try to eat that reishi mushroom, you would have severe gastrointestinal upset, and this could definitely cause a toxic episode in the liver. So ultimately, Polypore mushrooms you would never eat. And even a lot of the softer mushrooms like white button mushrooms and oysters, you would still want to cook those to make them optimally digestible and medicinal. So I think the whole raw food movement has created a lot of confusion by not making this key discernment that certain plant foods and mushrooms are incredibly toxic and not healthy in their raw form. So not everything is meant to be eaten raw. So certainly there are some points to the raw food diet movement and consuming raw foods, but not all foods are meant to be consumed raw. And mushrooms and cruciferous vegetables, as an example, when consumed raw could have the opposite effect that you're looking for. So ultimately, consuming raw mushrooms is a bad idea. And why am I saying this? Well, in the study, it points out two key differences in the supplements being used. The one that caused no toxic effect was a boiled, meaning a hot water decoction of reishi mushroom, where just a medicinal bioavailable tea was left behind and consumed and drank, and the reishi fruiting body discarded. However, when they're referring to a reishi powder, they're talking about a raw reishi mushroom that has been dehydrated, sliced up, and ground into a powder. So ultimately, taking a reishi powder, you're just consuming a powdered form of the raw mushroom. Grinding up to a powder does not break down or dissolve the chitin and make it digestible. It just makes it easier to consume. This is the key difference to be made. This is a key thing to understand as an herbalist, as a nutritionist, or as a chef, which is that in order to make something digestible, 
you ultimately have to know how it needs to be prepared. And in the case of a polypore, which you're not gonna be able to necessarily consume just by pan frying it, you're gonna need to turn that into a decoction to extract the medicinal qualities out of it and leave that undigestible fruiting body behind. So the reason that the people are experiencing a liver toxic episode consuming the reishi powder was because they're ultimately consuming an indigestible raw powdered reishi mushroom, which leads to liver toxic effects in a very simple way. First of all, chitin, being a non-biocompatible match to the human digestive tract, is going to be perceived by your body as a foreign invader or pathogen, which is going to trigger an immune response, an inflammatory response, and this could cause a toxic episode to the liver because the liver has to metabolize all the pathogens, all the foreign substances in the body. The other thing is that anytime you consume something indigestible and you're not breaking it down, this can cause a overgrowth of gut pathogens or bacterial endotoxin, which through the process of trying to break down that indigestible matter, create metabolic wastes that are toxic to the gut, causing inflammation and toxicity. So ultimately it's true. Reishi mushroom would cause toxic effects if you consume it the wrong way which is the key importance, again, of knowing how to properly prepare an herb or mushroom in the basis of herbalism, or at least one of the fundamental principles to understand. And when done so, reishi mushroom is not only non-toxic, as that study verified and validated, it is highly medicinal, as seen by many, many other studies. So the key takeaway here is that reishi mushroom in of itself, toxic. But when decocted or extracted using hot water or alcohol, it is highly medicinal and non-toxic. However, raw reishi, even if it's in a powdered form, could induce a toxic effect over time. Now, there's something else to understand considering that you're watching our YouTube channel, which is that there is a difference between a reishi mushroom powder and a reishi mushroom powdered extract like what we carry here on Vitagen. So a powdered extract like what we carry is not to be confused with a powdered herb. I actually talk about this in depth in this video here, which ultimately explains that a powdered extract is actually already prepared and decocted, either through hot water, alcohol, or both, known as a dual extraction, and then through technology is evaporated, leaving behind this very concentrated powdered extract, which dissolves easily into water, but is not a whole herb or whole mushroom powder, which is ultimately non-extracted. It's again, just that raw substance ground up which you would want to ultimately boil, then strain out. So you'd want to make a tea with that and leave the residue behind to make it non-toxic and bioavailable. However, the powdered extracts that we carry here on Vitagen are completely safe and non-toxic and medicinal. So they sort of combine the best of both worlds. You're getting the convenience of a powdered substance that's easily dissolvable into water, that actually requires one less step. You don't have to boil it. You can just put it right into water, sort of like an instant tea and it's also something that's already been extracted and prepared so that way it's very medicinal. So if you've been concerned about whether or not reishi mushroom is toxic and you've been specifically taking our products, you have nothing to worry about. However, just keep in mind as you've learned in this study, if you're going to start supplementing with any medicinal mushrooms or various herbs, you want to make sure that you're either getting an already decocted or extracted product or if you're getting the whole product in this raw form that you either turn it into a decoction or an alcohol extraction yourself. Now, one other thing I just wanted to mention while I had you here in this video is that just because a substance is raising your liver enzymes does not mean that it's inherently toxic, meaning that elevated liver enzymes does not always mean liver damage. And the reason I say this is because there are concerns out on the internet. I've seen them in forums. I've actually received similar emails basically saying that after using certain herbs or mushrooms, I've noticed my liver enzymes have elevated. Does this mean my liver is being damaged? And the short answer is not necessarily. You see, there are so many other parameters that are indicative of liver function. Elevated liver enzymes are just one parameter. And if you go off of only one parameter to measure the health and function of an organ, you're not gonna get a complete picture. Take for example, thyroid testing. The gold standard of thyroid testing today only measures your TSH and maybe a doctor will look at your T4. But doctors today are taught to not look at your T3. They don't regard other important factors like reverse T3, like your cholesterol levels, like your prolactin levels. They don't even look at the function of your liver and other important indicators of good thyroid function. However, that would be incredibly helpful and wise to do if you really wanna know what's going on with your thyroid. 
because just looking at the TSH and even the T4 does not give you a good measurement of what's actually occurring in your thyroid. It doesn't tell you whether you're converting the thyroid hormone into the active form or not, as an example. Or if there's other things like elevated estrogen and cortisol that's opposing your thyroid function and making it inactive. So using that as an example, elevated liver enzymes does not always mean liver damage. In fact, there are plenty of very beneficial substances like nicetamide that also elevate liver enzymes but it doesn't mean that it's actually damaging your liver. As a prime example of this, take a look at reishi mushrooms and other medicinal mushrooms. One of their key features is that they're potent detoxifiers. And if you're taking a detoxifying herb or mushroom that's gonna assist your liver, the master detoxification organ, in detoxifying elements from your body, then liver enzymes might elevate. And why is this? Well, you see the liver is responsible for solubilizing all of the toxins in your body and even toxic hormones like estrogen solubilizes them to send to the kidneys to be excreted from the kidneys through the urine. So if you're taking a substance like reishi, which is known to assist in liver detoxification, it could, for example, be taking already stored toxic substances from your body. Let's say you have tons of stress hormones circulating through your body because you're chronically stressed and you take something like reishi which might be assisting the liver in detoxifying all those excess stress hormones, this is gonna increase the activity of the liver and this might cause the liver enzymes to elevate. So it's very important to understand the difference and discern between elevated liver enzymes because you've taken a toxic substance or elevated liver enzymes because your liver is working harder to detoxify store toxins in your body or stress hormones. And I think the best way to determine that would be to get a very complete comprehensive view of the functioning of your liver. So instead of looking just at liver enzymes alone, look at other things like albumin levels. Take a look at C-reactive protein levels. Maybe even take a look at cholesterol levels or the functioning of the thyroid. If the thyroid's low, that might indicate that the liver is impaired because the liver converts thyroid hormone. So there are a lot of other things to look at when trying to judge or gauge the function of the liver more than elevated liver enzymes. So my point here is that if you've been concerned that a certain herb or product you're taking is toxic because it's raising your liver enzymes, look at other parameters first, especially when you're talking about something like reishi mushroom, which has been used for 5,000 years and when properly prepared has no negative side effects. And my point being that before you start to point the finger at something that's very natural, like a medicinal mushroom or natural supplements and herbs, maybe look at other factors in your life that could be actually the sole cause of any sort of toxicity, like environmental estrogens, estrogens in your diet, consuming alcohol, consuming polyunsaturated fats. You know, these things are more likely the culprit and even psychological stress which doubles your estrogen levels in your blood, which means more toxic estrogen for your liver to handle. It's more likely these other factors, in my experience, than it is something like an herb or mushroom, especially if the ones that you're supplementing with are organic, high quality ones that have been properly prepared. So if you're a fan of reishi and you're taking it for all of its amazing benefits, it's adaptogenic, immunomodulating, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer benefits that all have been proven in clinical study, but you've been concerned whether or not it's causing liver damage, hopefully this video has helped to clarify things. And again, as long as it's a good quality one that's most importantly been properly prepared and ideally organic, then you should have nothing to worry about. However, that does bring this video to a close. So if you've enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're new here and you wanna see more content like this. And of course, if you're interested in supplementing with or learning more about what reishi mushroom can do for you, then you can find that on our online tonic herb shop in the description box below.